Welcome everyone to our online service. Today, naka-premiere po tayo. Medyo challenge yung ating internet. But anyway, we are having our series break and we will be looking at our title series, Mission Continues. We will talk about missions for the next two weeks beginning today and we will like to highlight the importance of going into the missions. Alam niyo po sa victory, ito po yung ating ine-emphasize taon-taon. Meron po tayong sineset aside na dalawang linggo that we would like to talk about missions. So that we will know that we are called not only to our own locations, but we are called to the nations. Now, our series objective is that at the end of this series, our people will have a clear understanding of the power of the gospel to change not only lives but nations and the responsibility of the believers to that mission. And my friends, that is what we would like to highlight for the next two weeks. Now, to begin, our text will be in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 18. Now, meron tayong series na Gospel Explained and because we are highlighting missions, we would like also to look at the book of Romans as our main text in the understanding about missions. Alam natin that the gospel as explained by Paul in the book of Romans is the reason why we have missions. And so, titignan din natin yung idea ng missions doon sa book of Romans. If you have your Bibles with you, read with me in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified and with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who, who believes in Him will not be put to shame. Verse 12, For there is no distinction between Jew and and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing His riches on all who call on Him. Verse 13, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in Him from whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching verse 15 and how are they are to preach unless they are sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news verse 16 but they have not all obeyed the gospel for isaiah says lord who has believed what what he has heard from us so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Verse 18, But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed, they have poor. Their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. Let me pray. Lord, thank you as we zero in on missions. Thank you, God, that you will illumine our minds. Thank you, Lord, that you will speak to us concerning our participation in this great commission. Thank you, Lord, that we will not abandon our responsibility, but rather embrace and participating in the works of God in the nations. Thank you, Lord, for your people, that you will indeed bless them in many ways, so that we will be a blessing to many, that our nation will be a blessing to the nations of the world as well by preaching the gospel to the ends of the earth. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Give us the grace of God, the love of God, and, Lord, the gospel to permeate our, our hearts and our lives, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, uh, since we are looking at the book of Romans, the book of Romans is an ideological uh, epistle. 
because it is centered on a particular idea. The idea that righteousness from God is being revealed by having faith in Christ Jesus through the gospel. That's the main idea of the book of Romans. And it has been given by Paul, particularly in the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, where it says there uh, in verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first to the Jews, then to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous will live by faith. You see that this particular verse of the book of Romans is stamped all the rest of the entire book. If you look at chapters 1 and 2, it talks about the unrighteousness and disobedience of the people of the world, even Jews or Greek or even the Gentiles, that the rest of the world stand condemned because of their sins. If you look at chapter 3 and chapter 4, it speaks about the righteousness of God from uh, based from faith. And then chapter 5 and chapter 6 speaks of the light in Christ. Chapter 7 speaks about the failure of the law to save us from our sins. Chapter 8 speaks about the spirit, the life in the spirit. And chapter 9 through 11 speaks of the rejection of the Jews towards the gospel. And the rest of the chapters in the book of Romans talks about the implications of that righteousness of God through man on their daily living. You see that the book of Romans is so uh, is so weak by Paul in such a way that we could understand what the gospel is. Now, we'd like to highlight the who in the power of the gospel. As we jump into our text in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9, it says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who calls on him. Verse 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, one of the interesting thing about the way Paul presented his teaching is that he always referred back to the Old Testament. The Jews are known for their love or even understanding about the law of Moses and the Old Testament books. And so Paul, in order for him to be heard and to back up what he is saying and his teachings, he had this uh, parang gusto niyang palaging i-repair yung tignan, yung Old Testament in view of the things that God revealed to him. And so parang in a way, the Jews will be able to uh, know what he is talking about. And so one of the first thing that I would like to highlight that Paul also mentioned in the book of Romans is what is mentioned in the Old Testament. So, naging ano niya na yun, part na yun ng kanyang teaching. And in this text, in, or in these verses, one thing is that Paul says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, this stem from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 32. And it says there, And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord 
shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be those who escape as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. You see that the prophet Joel talks about anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved on the basis that on the latter days, the Spirit of the Lord will indwell and poured out from all the flesh. And see that this was also used by Paul to be able to communicate that there will be a time that people will call upon the Lord and will be saved. Now, the biblical promise concerning prayers are intended for believers. But there is one case wherein the Lord will hear the prayer or the call of an unbeliever if it, it entails about salvation. So, pag inisig mo na kapag tayo nagpipray, the promises of the scripture and the Bible speaks towards God's people. It speaks about us being the son and daughters of, or children of God. And it does not speak well towards people who do not know Him or God did not know them. But there is one case and that is that particular case when an unbeliever can pray to God and the Lord will listen to his cry or to his call because it is a call for salvation. If you look at the book of Romans chapter 3, Paul talks about the Gentiles and the Jews are alike. And it came from a neg negative uh, connotations because at, it is said in the book of Romans chapter 3 that everyone stand condemned because of our sins. Now, jumping to chapter 10, you see that Paul also says that there is no distinction between Jews and Gentiles. But this time, on the standpoint that of victory, because everyone can now call to God for salvation. Whether you are a Jew or a Greek or a Gentile, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, Paul argued that no one can call to God unless they believe or they trust God. And so, the Jews during those times failed to call the Lord because they thought, because they do not believe. Because the Jews during those times did not believe about two things that we could read in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 that it says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead there are two important doctrines about Christ that the Jews hardly believe and this is the doctrine of incarnation and resurrection the Jews did not believe that it is it was Jesus that God sent to be the Messiah. They rejected Christ. And more than that, they do not believe on the resurrection. And that is why Jews did not, uh, was, although there were Jews who believed in Christ, but definitely the totality of the Jews during those times rejected the gospel. Moving on in verse 14, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in whom in him um whom in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Another one that I would like to highlight concerning the sharing of Paul towards the Roman believers is 
the idea that how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. That this particular verse in, in the book of Romans came from the book of Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7 where it says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. You see that a missionary must preach a message. That in verse 14 and 15, Paul reason for unbelievers to call on God that they need to hear the gospel. Because when the message is heard, therefore a person can either trust or reject the gospel. Now during those times, uh, there, the New Testament was not yet written. And so when Paul says, once a person hears the gospel, it means that the gospel is being brought to anyone by way of uh, word of mouth. Because even though the epistles of Paul were written already and was being uh, circulated in churches, the New Testament was not yet uh, published. And so it was through hearing and hearing and understanding the gospel that anyone can have faith in Christ. Now Paul gave a series of questions that entails the, the steps that we should take in order for the gospel to reach any person. That accordingly, how then that they can call without, without believing? And how they can believe without someone preaching to them? And how could they preach without someone being sent? And you see that this important step towards the belief of the gospel is very important. So that people may come into the saving knowledge of Christ. And this is also the main reason why Paul was so eager to preach the gospel. He, he was bold in declaring the gospel even to the Gentiles. As he, as he was the apostles to the Gentiles. And so a missionary needed to preach the gospel. Now as a way of an illustration, here in Victory we are we have we can participate in proclaiming and preaching the gospel of Christ in two ways. We have a long term missionary wherein you can be a missionary to a nation for a long haul or even for the rest of your life if you want, if that is your calling or for a 10 days mission trip. In that way, you will be used by God in proclaiming and preaching the gospel of Christ. Now, as I, ha I have two experiences in the past wherein I signed up to be part of a short-term miss mission which we called 10 days missions. Nagpunta po kami sa Thailand and Malaysia to be part of that short-term mission team that will preach the gospel to the people in Thailand and in uh, Malaysia. Both nations are predominantly Buddhist nations. And so you mean we need to be creative in proclaiming the gospel. We need to build relationship with them. We need to go to the campuses to engage the students and to have English classes to be able to find ways I, an open door for us to preach the gospel and as I remember it I believe we had a lot not a lot but we have some uh, people 
from Thailand and even in Malaysia that we were able to bring in to the our every nation church in those nations. And in that way, we are being part of reaching the nation and preaching the gospel to the ends of the earth. Moving on, in verse 17, it says, So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed, they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. Now, the last one that Paul quoted from the Old Testament to bring in the message of the gospel to the Jews during those times is that their voices has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. This verse stem from the book of Psalms chapter 19 verse 4 where it says their voices has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world so exacto no yung mga wordings ni Paul and the idea is that missionaries must be sent to the nations missionaries must be sent to the nations the closing message of the book of acts is that the Jews of Paul's days from Jerusalem to Rome rejected Jesus as their Messiah. Individual Jews believe in God, but the torch of the gospel was passed from Jewish nation to the Gentiles. Not only the Christianity spread from Jerusalem to the nations of the world, but that particular gospel was not only limited to the Jews, but it became a hope to all the nations. If you read the book of Acts chapter 28, verse 28, it says, Therefore, let it be known to you that the, that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and they will hear it. Now, in view of the rejection of the gospel by the Jews, Paul is making it sure that the Gentiles will indeed receive the gospel. And it indeed happened that all the missionary works of Paul from, the, from his first missionary journey up to his third missionary journey and on his way to towards uh, Spain and even Rome, he was able to engage all kinds of people and he was able to reach out as many as he can. In fact, the first century church was able to pass on the gospel to the next generation and it reached even to our now generation. And we are hoping that that same gospel will be preached to all the nations of the world in all generations. Now, now, as an illustration to this, that missionaries are sent to the nations. One, our very own Maricel Tolentino is now done with his her schooling for world missions. She is about to be sent to the nation of Cambodia to be a full-time, long-term missionary. And uh, throughout this pandemic, or despite this pandemic, she was able to complete the training and the schooling that she needed to be an effective missionary of the world. In fact, uh, when Maricel served with us for 11 years in Victory Bacoor and Victory Tejero, and uh, with uh, so many things that she, the experiences that she had, and the uh, and and the, the the work that he labor she labored here in our church, talagang hindi natin matatawadan. And because of that, we are sending our best. We are sending somebody who can really impact a nation. With this. We know that indeed the mission 
continues. We will continue to reach the nation no matter how the mission field looks like because we know that God is sovereign. God will open the door for us to preach the gospel and that we will continue the work that God entrusted to us. Every year, here in Victory, we are asking people to partner with us to be able to fund and support our missionaries. And this Sunday, we will be renewing our pledges. If you are a regular world partners in, uh, in support to our missions, we are appealing to continue your support towards our mission endeavors. And if you are uh, a first time in our church and you have not yet experienced supporting us through, the, through missions, we are encouraging everyone to join us and support our mission, uh, the things that we do on missions. Now, it will be easy for us today to renew our pledges and also to have our pledges just click on the link on located on this page mahanapin niyo lang yan diyan lang yung ating link i-click niyo lang po yan and you will be uh, uh, you can now you can renew your pledge and at the same time you will be able to pledge and be part of what God is doing to the nations amen praise God let me pray lord thank you as we look to you now as we lord uh, participate in that great commission lord i pray that we will do our part if you call us to go to the nations i pray that you will impress a nation into our hearts even today if you call us to pray i pray that we will intercede in behalf of our missionaries and in behalf of the things that we are doing in the nations to preach the good news of the kingdom of God or if you call us to give I pray that you will Lord continue to bless us with abundance so that we can give much to the nations thank you Lord that the mission continues and that we will continue to do our share and our part in making disciples of all nations Thank you, Lord. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Magandang uh, araw po sa lahat and God bless us all.